Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. Genesis 1, 26. We'll read up to 28. Genesis 1, 26 and to 28. The title of my message this morning is the Dominion Mandate, part 1. That's the theme of our conference. And you know as our custom is, before we get to the conference, I always minister on the theme that God has given to us. Amen. And God said, who said? Come on, who said? And God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have what? Shout it out like you are alive. What should they have? One more time, let Jesus hear you. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the face of the earth. So God created man in his own image, and in the image of God created he him. What? Male, and what else? Female. All right. Not male and male. All right. The Bible says, God blessed them and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish what? Not replenish Reese Park. Replenish where? Ask your neighbor. Look them in the eyeball. Ask them, do you have an international passport? Some people brought down their face. <laughs> That's why you are only replenishing Soweto. <laughs> He says, replenish the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over, the ev over every living thing that moveth upon the face of the earth. So from here, we can see that the essence of God creating man is for what? Come on, shout now. One more time, shout it out. He created us for dominion. He created us because he wants us to have dominion. So what God did is that when he created the earth, God did not plan that he will rule the earth himself. Are you here? What did I say? God did not plan to do what? To rule the earth himself. So he decided that I'm going to create men. And the men that I create, I will rule the earth through that man. Look at your neighbor, say you are a ruler. Look at them again, say you are a king. Hmm, that's the essence. Now, unfortunately, um, when Adam and Eve obviously messed up, you all know the story, he did create them. And gave them this dominion. And I mean, if you really want to know the true essence of dominion, go and read Adam and Eve's story before they sing. You will understand what God means by dominion. That this man named every single animal in the earth today. Both the ones inside the sea and the ones in the air. Including the lion. He had dominion. So he named all of them. But unfortunately for you and me, Adam and Eve didn't have any children before they fell. Because if they did have children, the dominion mandate would have continued through those children. Because remember, when God gave them the dominion, they still had it before they sinned. They only lost it when Satan came in. I don't know why Adam just didn't sleep with his wife before 
that dude, he's one of the people I will ask questions in heaven. If I meet Adam, dude, I'm telling you, why didn't you just make Eve pregnant? Eh? Or is it Eve that refused? I don't know. I'm failing to understand that one. But unfortunately, they didn't have children before they fell. So when they now fell, that was when they began to have children. And now, the, the, the result of losing the dominion went straight to their offspring. To the point where an elder brother killed who? His younger brother. The moment they fell, the Bible said that God made them in his image and in his likeness. That image there means DNA. It means nature. They had the nature of God. And when they sinned, they lost the nature. And man began to take on the nature of Satan. That's why today, the natural man is wicked. That's why today, we have corrupt politicians who are not thinking of the people. That's why today we have arm robbers and skeletons. We have people robbing churches. We have people that are breaking into your homes. It is that nature that we lost that is still in them. Remember the Bible says, um, in, I, I think we read that in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. He said, we who were also dead in sin and walking according to our old nature in the time past has God quickened and raised back Alright, so the reason why Jesus had to come is that he needed to restore back that nature to us. That dominion back to us. Are we together, church? So we, we lost the nature of God. I don't want to go ahead of myself. But you see, when, when the, the, the Bible talks about nature, the word nature there, like I said to you, is DNA. Somebody shout DNA. Is the nature of royalty. You are not hearing me. It's the nature of kingship. That's why you see that when Jesus came, the Bible says in the book of Revelation, he has made you and me, what? Kings and what else? Priests. Unto who? Our God. He came to restore everything that Adam lost. That you and I had the nature of Satan. The Bible says, all have sinned and come short of what? The glory of God. Everybody born into this world, as soon as you are born. You see, like Katleho is born now. He's born today. Katle, Katleho. Katleko. Katleko or Katleko. Katleko. Okay. Katleko was born yesterday. But do you know that Katleko was born a sinner. But the child is still in hospital. Has not done anything. Has not lied to Pastor KG. <laughs> but yet, he's born a sinner. And that's how you and I were. In fact, David put it this way. He said, in sin or in iniquity did my mother conceive me. Are we together, church? We were born in sin. Not because we sinned, but because Adam, look at your neighbor, say, don't be like Adam. Mm. Don't be like Adam. Because Adam sinned. So I want to take this thing gradually for us. So because he sinned, he committed high treason, gave away the authority, the mandate that God gave him. That's why today, you and I today are born sinners. Now, when God said, I will make them in my uh, image and my likeness. I said to you that the image is his nature. Somebody say the nature of God. The image is his DNA. Somebody say his DNA. Now that you are born again, the Bible says, whatsoever is born of God overcometh this world. That means that now you are, if you are born again, you are born of God. God, the seed that gave birth to you as a child of God is not a natural seed. Is a spiritual seed that is of God. You 
we've overcome this world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So the Bible says that, you know, we, when, we, when we lost that, when Adam sinned, we lost that image. We lost that royalty, the kingship. We lost the DNA. Are we together, church? Then he says, let us make men in our likeness. What is likeness? His functionality. To function like we function. That you are supposed to function like God. Uh -uh. How did God create the earth? What did he do? He spoke. That is the original make of you. You are, you are, in fact, you are a speaking spirit. When Jesus came, he was bringing a narrative to the disciples. He went to a fig tree, and the fig tree, he asked for, he wanted fruit of, of fig from the tree. But when he got there, he saw only leaves in Mark 11. And the Bible says he cursed the fig tree. And the fig tree, in 24 hours, they returned from the same road, on that, the next day, and the fig tree was dead. And Peter called unto him and said, Master, the fig tree which you cursed is dead. The first thing that came out from Jesus' mouth is, have faith in God. Now, the original Greek reads it this way. Have the God kind of faith. That means function like God. For whosoever, verse 23 of Mark 11, shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he will have whatsoever he says. Look at your neighbor say, you are really having what you say. Your life is a sum total of what you are saying. All this I'm broke, I am average. I am, when was the last time you wake up? Look in the mirror. I'm a billionaire. Look, I know when you say it the first time, the room where you are will be speaking back to you. Hey, look at me, look at me. Look at the bed. In fact, you slept, your mattress is on the floor. And the room is talking. Ignore the room. And speak again. Respond to that room. Because that's exactly what the fig tree did to Jesus. If you read that account, he says, and he answered Jesus. How does a tree answer a man? The fig tree answered Jesus. So, what he's saying is, don't let your circumstance determine what you say. Speak the word only. Speak your expectations only. I am blessed. You must hear me talk. I wake up in the morning. Every morning once I finish my three, four hours prayer, I will say my brain is blessed. My kidney is blessed. My heart is blessed. My lungs are blessed. My esophagus is blessed. My intestines are blessed. My bones are blessed. My joints are blessed. And so I am 53 with not a single pain in my life. Uh -uh, you are not here. But you, you wake up, hey, I'm in pain. Then when you get out of bed, the pain say, no, you can't walk normal. <laughs> we talk different. Look at your neighbor and say, we talk different. Mm, we don't talk like unbelievers. Don't speak like them. I said something yesterday at, uh, at where I went to preach. I said, look, don't complain. Whatever wrong and mess the government is doing, don't complain. That's your opportunity. The failure of the, of the government is the opportunity of the church. Okay, you didn't receive that. I said the failure of the government is the opportunity of the church. Are we together? So we don't talk like the world. God made us to function like him. How your father functions. How does God respond to things? His wisdom. He, the Bible says God by wisdom from the earth. I think it's Proverbs 3, 9. Check that scripture. Let me see. Proverbs 3, 9. Just give me what he says. Let me see. Uh, 
as correct. Come on now, come on, media team, help me. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord by wisdom has founded the earth. By understanding, he had established the heavens. By wisdom. So every child of God is supposed to function how? Come on, talk to me. Now, church, it is not wisdom to do the things that God said you should not do. It's quiet. If God says, give alcohol to him that is ready to perish. Now, if you drank a cider yesterday, I, uh, I have been sent from heaven after you as an SAPS. If you drank alcohol last night or two nights ago, God says you should give alcohol to who? Somebody that wants to perish. I see somebody at the back does not agree. Give, look for that scripture. He thinks I'm joking. Uh -huh. Find it in the a, a, a New Living Translation or TPT. If there is any, yeah, just look for a, a small a, a translation that that will tell them the real. They read with me one to go. Strong drink is given to the terminally ill who are suffering at the brink of wine is for who? In depression. Hey, Jesus. In order to drown their sorrows. Let them drink. You see, the, you, the person putting this thing is a drunkard. Put it back. <laughs> Let them drink and do what? Forget their poverty and their mystery. You are not a poor man. Because the Bible says Jesus, even though he was rich, yet he died what? Poor. That you through his poverty might become rich. So you are not a poor man. Apostle wine is okay. Uh -uh, you, are, you are reading. Did you read the Bible? Terminally ill. At the brink of death. That means we will bury if, if next week. May that not be your portion in Jesus' name. Look at your neighbor and say, if there is any alcohol in your house, when you get home, break it, break it, break it. Pour it into the sink. Let it flow. Remove it from your home. You don't need it. Amen. Some people are not happy. Look at your faces. Oh, Jesus. Ah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Somebody in their mind, apostle, wrong message, wrong message, wrong message. Change your message this morning. I will not change it. You must have dominion by fire, by force. I say you must have dominion by fire. <laughs> because you see, you, you function like your father. You don't see God waking up every day and drinking alcohol. For what? Why? Some people have even argued that the wine that Jesus tend to, uh, the water that Jesus tend to wine, it has alcohol. So that's why they drink. May God have mercy on you. How dare you accuse Jesus of that? Anyway, how did I get to wine? All right. The functionality of God. So, there were three things God did in Genesis 1.26. So, the first one is that he made us in what? In his image. What is his image? His nature. What is his image? His DNA. What is his image? His royalty. If you notice... Peter was writing to us in uh, 1 Peter 2.9. He says, you are a chosen generation. A royal what? Priesthood. A holy nation. A peculiar people. When you, somebody say you are peculiar, that means you are not like others. If they are drinking alcohol, you don't. 
If they are sleeping with men and women they are not married to, you don't. You are peculiar. Look at your neighbor. Say, hello, peculiar. That sounds like a Zimbabwean name. <laughs> are you Zimbabwean? <laughs> you know, church, I thought this service would be very serious. You guys are making me make jokes. Amen. So he made us in his image. And then the second thing that he made us is what? In his likeness. In that scripture. He made us in what? His likeness. That means how he functions. He wants men to function like him on the earth. The same way he's taking dominion in heaven. Listen. In heaven there is no craziness. Satan tried to be crazy. What did they do? Bah! Like a soccer ball. They flung him out of, the, out of heaven. That's how God wants you to function. When there is any nonsense in your house, kick the devil out. If your child is, I mean, you're, you can't look at your child, your baby, four years old. He look at you and say, mommy, you are stupid. There are two ways to kick out that devil. The first one is Satan, I bind you in the name of Jesus. Then the other one is a right hand of fellowship. The child will see Jesus and Satan at the same time and make a choice to follow Jesus. I promise you. <laughs> you know, I always tell this story. Kion, my son, when he was a baby, Kion was, I don't know, how old, four years or, or so. Old. So I came into the lounge from upstairs and he was watching TV. I said, Kion, it's time to sleep. And he kept watching cartoon, all these puppy keys and cartoon network. I said, okay. Uh, I said it once. The second one, when I said it, I just took out the slippers I was wearing. Sm he was not wearing shirt. I smacked it on his back and he left the print of the slippers behind him. And him and his mother started crying and they, they cried both to sleep. The Bible says, spare the rod and what? Spoil the child. If you can give your child instruction three times and he has not obeyed, he is your father. He's not your, you are not the father. What? I tell you to do something once. Second, by the third one, you are already seeing the heavenly places. Kion saw stars. Angels were flying around in his in his presence. That was the last time I ever smacked him. From that day at four years till today, I've never lifted a finger on him. But that one time is a day to be much remembered. <laughs> Are we together? So God created you to do what? Function like him. Function like God. How are you living your life? When you look at the way you live, do you function like God? What are you doing now secretly that you know God hates? And yet you keep doing it. To function like him. To behave like him. To act like him. To respond to situations like him. Can God ever be depressed? He created the heavens and the earth, Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God did what? Created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, what? Let there be light. And what happened? There was light. What did God see first? He saw void. He saw darkness. He saw trouble. He saw things that were chaotic in his finance. Things, that word darkness means things were not in order. But God didn't go into depression. Like many of you will. That's not the functionality of God. To go into depression. Nothing should depress a child of God. 
Why? Why? Because according to scripture, when anything happens, how many things are working together for my good? Listen. You know, I've shared this many times. When my late wife passed, on the day of her funeral, I woke up at 2 in the morning. And I knew that Satan wanted to torment me on that day. You know what I did? There is a, a gospel artist called Choma Jesus in Nigeria. I put her song, the dancing songs, and I began to dance for two hours. My younger brother was sleeping the next door. He woke up and said, when he woke up, he said, hey, I've been hearing you blasting music and blasting in tongues. I said, I refuse to be depressed. And I danced before God for two hours. Although I cried. After that, I went to the toilet, locked myself, and I wept. And we came here for the funeral. Because I wanted Satan to know, this boy functions like God. I will not be depressed for losing a, child, a wife. No. Uh -uh. A, you, you wake up. <laughs> I'm finished. I'm dead. You go and take rope. What? Man, better days are ahead of you than today. Why will you kill yourself for self? What? You lost your job. You kill yourself? One of the brothers in this church, he has an uncle in Soweto who drives a BMW X5 and an Audi A4. Brand new cars in his garage. He committed suicide in between the two cars inside the garage. They came and met him. Oh, the neck is gone. On the rope. He's dead. Between two brand new cars. How? That guy is far better than many of you here. But the joy of the Lord is your strength. Function like God. Don't let any a man left you. I want to kill myself. There is a young man in, my, in, in our family that took a bullet. His wife told him he wanted to leave and he took a pistol and fired and blew his head. But unfortunately... The bullet only blinded him. Now till today, he's blind. They lead him everywhere. A man leaves you, you want to kill yourself. Let him go. There are better men. God, uh, you are not hearing me. You, you didn't hear what I said. There are better men. They are better, far better. Some of the people that left you, a day is coming, you will go and send them offering. To thank them for leaving you. Because had they not left you, you would not have met the right person. You didn't hear me. Church, function like God. Then the next thing that God did, the third one, he said to them, have what? Dominion. Somebody shout dominion. Say it like you are serious, dominion. Now, I want to talk about the mandate, the dominion mandate. There are three components of a mandate. Write it down. Three components of a mandate. I'm teaching today. So it's not a shouting message. Three components of a mandate. Number one is the assignment. The assignment. That word mandate is actually a governmental word. Those of you who work in the government and you are in high position, um, when a president is elected, he's given a mandate. What do you call it? A mandate. So when you, all of you now, you we're going to vote in a few months from now and we're going to choose a president. What it means is that you are giving a mandate to that man to rule you. And church, you must be careful who rules you. You are not hearing me. Because it will determine a whole lot of your pain or your enjoyment. You know, right now in South Africa, the only prayer that I'm praying for leadership, I say, God, just give us a government that will stop load shedding, that will stop the crime, and number three, that will uh, increase employment. That will just help businesses to thrive so that more people can leave the street. And church, let me tell you, let me also say this. Because of the dominion mandate, 
you and I are not supposed to be living. If, they, if you lose your job, it's actually an opportunity. It's not a blessing. It's not a curse. Uh -uh. I'm sure you didn't hear what I said. If you lose your job, it's an opportunity. There are a billion businesses that have not started. Man has no idea who, what they are. But you have access to the Holy Ghost. You, I don't think you heard me. You have access to the Holy Ghost. There are tons of, many of you here, in the mandate God gave you in your purpose, your assignment is to be an employer of labor. But right now you earn a salary. You're under someone. So be what? An employer of labor. Am I saying working is wrong? You can be working and own a business that is running and people are working for you. Uh -uh, you didn't say amen. There are people that enjoy what they do. If you are a nurse, you can be working as a nurse and you have another company or a baby salon or something, hair salon or something because you gifted in plating of hair. And you have people working there that you are paying. Are we together, church? The dominion mandate. You must never, when they, when they fire you from job, don't just, don't say I'm finished. That's when you kick into the real assignment. The real dominion mandate. And you begin to pray, Father, what next? Merabaha, jagabregedo, zamahelamanda. Father, what next? Magebo, jigabrode, gezubra, dayaha. Mambre, dozobra, angra, gada, bila, gada, monde, gedigada. God will tell you, okay, there is a system that nobody knows on the earth and the banks need it. I want you to develop it, design it and sell it to all the banks. And in two years, you are a billionaire. That's it. That's how many people got to where they are. It's not as if they, are, they have two heads. It's just that Africa, we are using our dominion mandate for witchcraft. That's why all of you from Limpopo are always in my office. Are we together? One of my sons sent me, a, a, he went home, sent me a picture, a bundle of muti by his house. He went to visit his home back in Limpopo. He said that this is what I found when I got home. So I said, son, it is well with your soul. Next time, may God bring you from, no, KZN also, you guys are also, mm, yeah, I've dealt with KZN. Mm. Are we together? So, so listen, church. That's the dominion mandate. The mandate has three components. Number one is your assignment. Do you know that many of God's people are struggling today because they don't know the reason for their creation? They are not doing what God created them for. Listen, I am in the center of God's will. I was born for this. I was born to talk. I used to sell properties to people. Now I'm selling the gospel. Not sell as in sell to make money. But now I am winning souls for the Lord. Through talking. The same thing. Same gift. Through talking. I was a marketer. I first sold insurance. Insurance policies. For a company called Rentmeister Assurance. Years ago. Before I started selling properties. All this involved selling, talking to people. Now God, the same gift, God has placed me on the altar. And I'm talking to people. Everywhere I go, I make altar call. People give their life to Christ. Are we together, church? So, you, you, people are not in their place. What's your assignment? What is your assignment? Do you know why you are on the earth? You think you're just here to make money. Uh -uh, that's a useless life. Any life that is here to make money is a useless life. What did I say? What did I call that kind of life? It's a useless life. Now, let me talk to you. Okay, I will get there. If you find your purpose, part of your purpose, okay, let me give you the second component of, the, of a mandate. is authority. Somebody shout authority. 
So the day you find your purpose and your assignment, the authority that is attached in that mandate is given to you. So I can, I, as I am now, I don't know any witch that can come in front of me and begin to do, hey, fele, 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 no. It will never happen, ever, ever. I don't know any Sangoma. A Sangoma tried it years ago. I was inside the bus. You know these buses. I was preaching. He, I stood up. And I, I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Those years, I used to enter bus. You know, I can just enter the bus from uh, the south to Elof in town. The reason is to preach. And I, I entered the bus. I stood up. I said, I bring you all greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then one Sangoma stood up with a black bag, brought out a moot, came straight, walked straight to where I was standing, took that thing to touch my head. I said, if that thing touches me, you are dead. He sh they shout, that guy screamed, the bus stopped. And they opened the door and he left. Because I am in my element. You are not hearing me, church. No devil will be able to stand before you. There is an authority that goes with your assignment. If you are in your mandate, if you are in your assignment, your purpose, there is authority that goes with it. There's authority. Just like when the president is in place, is in his office, He's, he has authority. Are we together? He has authority to make decree. He has authority. When you are in your assignment, you have a, or there is authority attached to your assignment. And then the third component of a mandate is resources. Maybe I'll, what's the time? Okay, I still have time. Resources. Now, let me talk to you. The reason why many are struggling financially is because they are not in their mandate. Every assignment from heaven comes with resource. You didn't hear me. And, and the resources is not just money. It's everything, good health. Everything you need, wisdom, understanding. It takes wisdom to pass to all of you. I was talking to them on Wednesday. I said, this church has almost every nation in Africa. South African, Zimbabweans, Botswana, Malawian, Swaziland, Zambia, Namibia, Congo DRC, Côte d'Ivoire. One of my daughters here is from Côte d'Ivoire. Cameroon, Nigerians. And I'm pastoring all of you from different cultures. It takes wisdom to do that. That resource comes as a result of me being in my call. Believe me, if I go now and decide I want to, I see somebody is selling fish and they became a billionaire and I, I desire to sell fish. Guess what? This wisdom I have may leave. It won't operate there. That I left my assignment. I said today I no longer want to be a pastor. I want to sell fish. You will lose that wisdom because you are not in your assignment. Your mandate comes with what? Resources. Your assignment comes with resources. God will back you up. Are we together, church? God will back you up. So you see a lot of pastors who are struggling financially. And instead of them to go and pray and say, Lord, why am I struggling? They will say, Apostle Felix has muti. I don't have muti. I am called. You are not. You had a missed call and you answered. You, you, you ran. <laughs> Are we together, church? I am called. What I'm doing, I'm, I'm called to do it. I can keep you here for the whole day talking. And we'll just be laughing. You will be enjoying yourself. It's not as if you'll be bored. No, you can't be bored under my service. Uh -uh. No. Very soon now, God will give me one joke. And you'll be on the floor. I, are we together? <laughs> uh, Jesus. So when you are there, God 
provides for you. So this is how God wanted men to rule the earth. He created all of us and he says, I, how many of you know what Jeremiah 29, 11 says? I know the plans I have for you. It is plans of good and not of evil to give you a hope and a future. So God says, before you came to the earth, I have planned your life. And you see, if you have ever built a house, you will know that you build according to what? Plan. Now, church, many of your lives are out of the plan that God has designed. And now you're wondering, why am I struggling? Why is life so hard? Why are things not working? Because you're not in his plan. Find out his plan. Because the dominion mandate does not mean you should be a pastor. In fact, the church has made the biggest blunder. The reason why many people want to be pastors today is because we are teaching them wrong. The real assignment is in the marketplace. So God selected a few people. The Bible said that when he led captivity captive, he gave gifts unto men, to some, not to all. Say to some. He said to some, he gave apostles, to some prophets, to some evangelists, to some pastors, to some teachers. What they are to do is that they are to equip the body for the work of ministry. That word ministry is not to preach in the pulpit. It is to go, if you are a lawyer, to go, your, your law society, law people are your ministry. Are you hearing me, church? If you are a lecturer, when you get there, that's your word, that's your ministry. You go there and the dominion mandate is to win souls. Hey, which scripture is that? First or second Kings chapter 2, verse 1. Let, yeah. The scripture where he says, uh, pray for kings and those in authority. Just look for that scripture for me. Is it second Kings? First Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. Come on, help me. Help me, help me. Is it first or second? Just look for it somewhere. I exhort therefore that first of all, supplication, prayer, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for how many? For all men. So he says you are to pray for all men every day. And then secondly, that, in, uh, um, sorry, first of all, supplication, prayer, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men. And the Bible says that for kings, somebody shout for kings, and all that are in authority. That means, listen, we are not even supposed to curse those in authority. We're supposed to pray for them. He says you should pray for them that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life. Do you see why kings are so powerful? Whoever you choose as a king, we determine whether you will have peace. Whether you will live a quiet life. Today our nation, every, almost everybody is living in fear because of criminals. Every day they are blowing up cash in transit. Just blowing them up. Crime is so high. And I mean everybody is quiet. We're just watching. There are countries you can't try that. In the United States, I've been going to the United States since the past 20, 20 what years? 20 years or so. If any crime happens in the 60, before you blink your eye, seven helicopters are on the air. You can't. In America, they don't have burglar proof. And there is no war in the houses. Hello? <laughs> what did I say? In America, there is no burglar proof. There is no wall. There is no gate. People just leave. Their house are open. Why is there people not going to? Because first and foremost, everybody has firearm. I see you in my house, you are dead. So you better stay away. Then secondly, any crime happens anywhere in 60 seconds, police is there. I was in Brazil to preach. Son, in Brazil, I, you can't walk. If you walk from the end of this altar to that end, it's 18 meters, you will find five policemen standing. 
and I'm talking policemen, not these ones with bot, bot belly and then big bombs. Uh -uh. If I'm robber, he's running. <laughs> no, you can't. You can't. That, that's not how to pursue I'm robber. Which I'm robber are you going to pursue like that? I'm talking when you see these women, Jehovah. You will nearly ask, are you a man or a woman? Keep that door, man, the belt full of all kinds of gadgets. Boy, if an American police stop you, by the time he stops you, you're already peeing in your underwear. One day I was driving. I was on the 35 zone, 35 kilometers uh, mile zone, and I was driving 60. I just then, wow, wow, wow. I say, it is over. <laughs> and the guy, he came, says, driver's license, please. I said, okay. I gave him my driver's license. I gave him South African driver's license. He said, uh, are you from South Africa? I said, yeah. I said, okay. Um, I said, I, I came for, what are you here for? I said, I came for holiday. I'm on vacation. He says, okay. You know why I stopped you? I said, yeah. Um, he said, okay, what did you do? I said, I, I saw it's 35, but I didn't see it on time. And um, I'm on 60. Then he took my passport and my driver's license went to his car, opened the computer, and started checking. And checked, I've never committed a crime before. And he came back and says, all right, Mr. Oko, I'm going to forgive you because this is your first time to commit an offense like this. But the next time you do this, you'll be arrested. Huh. I went, <laughs> Jesus. You guys would have heard your pastor is in prison in Atlanta. The devil is a liar. <laughs> Are we together? <laughs> you know, so he left me that day and that was it. So as I am, when I drive, I mean, we were in America in December with my kids. They see how I drive. I am so careful. Like, I look out for the, all the speedometer signs, like the mileage signs, whatever you're supposed to drive. If it's 20 kilometers, I stay on 19. <laughs> oh, you are not serious. No, seriously. We, our police, they need to send Becky Taylor to America. Even his English will change. Sometimes when these people speak, you just wonder, eh, did this guy go to school at all? Are we together? And they, they need to. They need to go and see how these things are done. When you land in the United States, it's the most tensed airport in the world. As you arrive, everybody is serious. Because when you look at custom officers, hey, Jesus, who were in Dubai, you know Dubai, they wear that, their cap, like Pastor Benji wore the other day, and that white robe. The immigration, that's their dress. Those boys are so pompous. So, the guy, my wife gave her passport, and she opened my wife's passport, and went to the back page and stamped in the middle. My wife said, why did you do that? Why didn't you stamp in the page that is next to the visa? She says, man, that, that's, that's not how to do your job. The guy looked at my wife. He said, nobody has ever talked to me like this. Life, I heard him say it. But in America, my wife is quiet. <laughs> <laughs> he could talk that because the guy was wearing rope. When you see an American immigration, just the way they are dressed. You have, I said American airport. When you land, you are in the queue. You are just behaving yourself. <laughs> when they say move, you just... Let them not find fault. Because of the seriousness of the people. Are we together? Church, what am I saying? When you are in your mandate, when you are in your purpose, there is provision. There is resources. When you do what God has called you to do, I guarantee you, you will not lack. And God will, because you see, the Bible says that no soldier goes to war at his own cost. So that means you are going to do God's assignment and God's bidding. And he finances that war. So if a witch, if all the witches in Johannesburg, in Limpopo, 
and in case they then come together and say, we have to kill Apostle Felix. They cannot. You know why? Because I am on assignment and there is supernatural protection. So I have angels that are guarding me. I have angels. So when I, when I go anywhere, I walk with angels. I, don't, I know I don't walk alone at all. I don't. No, I don't walk alone. Anywhere I am, you must know there are angels there. There are angels. So, God will provide resources when you are in your mandate. And unfortunately, many of us here don't have a sense of purpose. We're just living our life based on survival. Why did God give birth to me in this family? Why am I so and so? Now, church, let me tell you something about the dominion mandate. When you are in that element, and moreover, and, and when you are in that purpose, that purpose, the global, the mandate is global because you are now sent to the earth. You are no longer sent to Kibla Park. Uh -uh, you didn't say amen. When you truly enter your purpose, you are sent global. That's why I keep saying to you, go get passport. Because no matter how global mandate I have, if I didn't have a passport today, I will not be there. I will not go. As I finish this service, I am going to, the, to preach in another conference. When I finish there, I'm boarding a flight to Atlanta, Georgia. And I'll be back in this week. I'll be, I'll be here on Sunday. But I've gone to America, spoke to American police, and be back. <laughs> Are we together? I can't do that because I have a passport and I have a visa. Some of you can't cross CBD. <laughs> Are we together, church? Somebody say amen. I mean, it's amazing when you are in your element. You know, I, I, I was in, when I was in Dubai two weeks ago to preach, I had some people who are my sons and daughters. They flew in from Saudi Arabia. They say you are our spiritual father. I say, eh? <laughs> Saudi what? Arabia. Now, church, they, they, they gave us offering. Gave, man, two pictures with us. They said they're going to post it in Saudi Arabia. They've been following us. They've been... I'm like, wow. Throughout my stay in Dubai, I was, most of my meetings were in the uh, hotel. I was having meetings, counseling people that are mentoring. Sons in Dubai. In Dubai. So right now, you are not my only sons and daughters, spiritually. I have them in Dubai. I'm mentoring. Are we together? Somebody shout global mandate. That's the, the real dominion. Not my business is in Soweto. On, on Vikalazi Street or Vikala, Vika what? Vika. V, Vikalala, Vikalazi. Vilakazi Street. Yeah. Are we together? Not the, you must. Oh, may you receive a global mandate today. I said, may you receive a global mandate today. Some of you, please prepare for international. This church is very global. Now, I mean, church, look at it now. Just by 1st of May, I'll, people will be watching me in Australia. So by the time I get to Australia again, many sons are there. Many daughters are there. Just like that. From everywhere. My father. They will send me messages from Dubai. My father, my father. Daddy, daddy. I'm like, wow. Wow. This boy was born in a village. Village. You read village, oh? Serious village. I was born in a village. But here are people in Dubai. Daddy, my daddy, my daddy. It's amazing. Somebody shout amazing. And that's the way God created me and you. You and I have that mandate. It wasn't given to one person. Oh man, Psalm 115 verse 15. What did he say? He said that the heavens of the heavens belongs to who? To God. Where is he? Find it for me. He said, but the earth has he given to Apostle Felix? 
Uh -uh. Are you here? Oh man, find that scripture. Verse 16, yeah. He says, everybody read, one, two, go. The heaven, even the heavens, are whose? The Lord's. But the earth. To Felix, put your name there. Has he given to who? He gave it to you. Meaning, don't let your assignment end up in Soweto. It's time to fly to India for meetings. Uh -uh. Let me talk to this side. It's time to open a business that will take you to Germany. One day I was in a, 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 a place called Isabelta, Edmonton, in Canada. And you know, I got to that place. And I looked at this place. I said, what could have brought me here? If not that I'm in my assignment. What could have brought me here? It's nothing. Nothing that could have brought me there. I have traveled to more states in America than people that live in America. I've been almost everywhere. From the state of Ohio to Georgia to uh, uh, Florida to just keep naming them. To Tennessee to uh, uh, where? And just keep naming. To New York, the state of New York, to the state of, uh, what's the next one to New York? New York. The state of New York. Where haven't I been? I've preached everywhere. Everywhere. One day I drove from Atlanta, Georgia. I drove to Toronto, Canada. I crossed border. South African, no? oh, Nigerian plus. From, I drove 19 hours from the state of Atlanta to Toronto, another country. I crossed border. Church, you, when you are in your mandate, eh, the whole world becomes like your palm of your hands. I'm telling you. I, I, I was in a church to preach in Santa Maria. Hey, Jesus. Even the name, Santa Maria. In Brazil. Santa when I enter the church, everybody is white, including the pastor. I'm the only black. I said, baby, I told my late wife, what am I going to say to these people? And they don't speak English. It's Portuguese. So I'm preaching and they are interpreting. I said, you know, and, and you know how I preach when I go out. You guys go with me. When I release power, I saw all of them. I say, Jesus. You know, you just, you, just, you wonder, you say, God, how did I get here? Somebody shout purpose. Please find your purpose. Honestly speaking, find your purpose for in this life. Find your purpose. Your purpose will take you everywhere. Find your purpose. It's so powerful to discover your purpose. Some of you are in, in the marketplace, but you're in the wrong place. Find your purpose. Why did you create me? Why? You meet Taylor's. I was in Paris. It was uh, Paris Fashion Week. And I met all kinds of Taylor's designers from all over the world. All over. All over the world. Church, it's important. You know, this thing I'm saying, and these are Taylor's who, and yet, you are a tailor. You, you are in Soweto. You should be going to Paris, fa Paris Fashion Week. It's even your amen is in the, the highest level of ICU. <laughs> are we together? Find your purpose. Hannah, my daughter, is a model. Modeling has took, taken Hannah to the U.S., to New York. Hello. She's a model. It's a calling. It's, see, let me, modeling is a what? It's a calling. It's a grace. You can't, when you see Hannah prepare for modeling, it's like, a, it's like somebody that is in an office as a president. When she prepares. It's a serious calling. It's a grace. Because not everybody is like, Hannah eats the same food we eat, eats the same pap I eat, 
Her stomach never comes out. Mine, as I finish eating, I have added weight. And that child doesn't eat small, oh. If you see Hannah's plate, you will plead the blood. But yet, skinny, you know what I call her, skinny. That's what I, that's the name I gave her, skinny. Remains the same, Hannah the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's a calling. Somebody say it's a calling. Don't despise yours. Listen, yours might be small, but it will take you global. It will take you there. When she was there, companies were calling her to sign up for this, for this, for that. Signing up. Today, when was it? Uh, my wife called me and says, Wimpy just paid Hannah for the advert she did for Wimpy. Did you see me dancing on social media? Can you imagine? I have joined modeling. They say we have to do a video that Henna is advertising. She's, she's a, a wimpy, what they call them, wimpy advocate. What? what? Ambassador, not advocate. <laughs> Are we together? I mean, just like that. She's getting paid and she's still in school, in high school, writing matric. They just paid her, thousand, not, 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 not uh, hundred rand. Thousands. You say, somebody at that age is already earning money from just being skinny and... That's all. That's all she does. Amen, somebody? Look at your neighbor say, find your element. Let me tell you, there is, a way, there is a reason why you look the way you look. Don't despise how you look. Okay. Let me talk to some ladies before we go. You know, I know some of you sisters, you look at some ladies and their shape. You're like, oh my God. OMG. But you see, some people have that as a grace. They didn't create themselves. That's a grace given to them. Beautiful shape. Now, church, you may not have that shape, but you have another grace, inner beauty. And let me tell you, let, let me, hold on, hold on. Outside beauty attracts, but outside beauty does not maintain. That's why you find many men, they, if you look at most rich men, their wife is not the top of the range. Probably no shape. But the truth is, he wants a woman that can keep the house in peace. So yours is also a gift. But you see, you are, you are neglecting your gift and admiring the woman with Coca-Cola bottle that can't keep a man for one month. You are not hearing me. All right, let me, let me continue my message. Church, listen. The truth of the matter is we have a mandate from God to rule in this life. The Bible calls us kings and priests. Give me Revelation 5. I think verse 9. Let's read verse 9. Revelation 5 and verse 9. Quickly. Help me. The Bible said they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seal thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us unto our God by the blood, by thy blood to of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation. Next verse. And made us unto our God. What? Kings. And what else? Priest, and we shall. Are you reigning? Are you really reigning? And you see, church, you are a king, not by election. We can remove President Cyril. In this next election, if the whole nation decide we don't want President Cyril, we can remove him. He was elected by us, and we can remove him. Are you hearing me, church? The same way, you were not elected by men. You were elected by God as a king. And nobody can take it from you. I wish you got that. Nobody can dethrone you. When I'm in this element, no matter what you do, you can't do anything to bring me down. You can't. Unfortunately, you can't. Plan from now till tomorrow. Plan from now till next 20 years. You cannot. 
once I'm in this purpose. Because the one that sent me, packs me. I get back in home. I know they walk alone. I walk with God the Father. Walk with God the Son. I walk with host of angels. All of them. I get back in home. Mm -hmm. I know they walk alone. Sing it one more time. I walk with God the Father. I walk with God the Son. I walk with God the Spirit. Three of them join. I get back in home. Oh, 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 oh. oh, I know they walk alone. I am not alone. I said I am not alone. You are not alone. Stop being scared. You are not alone. The one that saved you never leaves you nor forsakes you. Never abandons you. Never has an abandoned project. No matter where you are today, don't ever think that God has forsaken you. I'm not alone. I have backing. I am backed by God. I've seen it times without number. In this ministry, how God has protected us. How God has provided for this church. Supernaturally. Supernaturally. Why? Because we have been appointed and made un unto our God as kings and priests. And so when you are in that element, you are ruling and reigning. You have dominion. You have dominion. This land didn't care that I was born in Nigeria. We own it. Somebody shout dominion. The next door didn't care. We are buying the next one now. As we speak, our third property as a ministry. We're buying it. Somebody shout dominion. So, church, it don't see the earth responds to kings. It responds to who? To kings. He says he made us kings and priests. So, right now, I'm wearing the priestly garment. I'm a priest. But many, all of you here, many of you are kings. That means kings are people called into the marketplace. There were very, very few men who were priests and kings. And I also wear that. I, I, I have a, I, I'm a businessman and I'm, I'm also a pastor. Are we together, church? I get deals, businesses. I connected two of my sons to do one business. When they finish, they wired my own. Mm -hmm. Daddy, there is for cold drink, kabosh. When they landed, I saw zero, 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 zero. Ah, yagaba, gaga, gaga, yaga, da. Mm, I said, that's it. If you want connection, meet me. Oh. Mm -hmm. ah. You will never be the same. You will never be the same. You've touched his grace. Your life has changed. You will not be the same. Me, I have come. One of my daughters called me. Say, Daddy, I'm going to Uganda. I want to meet with the president. I have a deal. Guess what? I say, no shaking. I took my phone. I called. One phone call. They organized. She met with the president. Somebody in this church. Met with what? President. One phone call. Not three. One. Yeah, you are running around. You know, the highest connection you have is Jesus. I'm telling you. God can connect you anywhere. 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 I'm a pastor. But connections everywhere. Connection. During COVID and lockdown, I was the only pastor traveling from South Africa to America. I had an exemption to live here. While you guys were on lockdown, I was flying. I will fly to go and preach. I remember I was preaching for uh, God's Tabernacle International. And, and so it was, it was that time that they didn't allow, because South Africa was a peculiar case. They say your own COVID-19 cannot be cured by anybody. So they never allowed South Africans to come to America, except for special reason. I had the exemption to travel. To go, I went to preach, came back. And you guys were still local. From today, you will go global. 
I'm telling you, from, what did I say? From today, you will go global. Go global. Many of you are going to be flying. After this conference, many of you will be flying to nations for business deal. It's time to go to Singapore. It's time to go to Thailand. It's time to go to Russia. It's time to go to Poland. It's time. Stop keeping yourself bound by one place. It's time to move. It's time to go to UK. Go there, you have meeting. Take pictures, send it to us. Put it on social media. Just finish the business meeting. Amen. I, I was, uh, when I was returning from Houston, so I took a picture of me in business class and I put it, somebody wrote, you know, all you skeletons, you're just flying business class as pastors. I looked, at, I wanted to say, you idiot. <laughs> because you don't know me. You don't know what I do. I might be a pastor, but you don't know the, the things I do, the businesses I do behind the scene. Are we together, church? But the dominion mandate is real. God wants you and I to rule. He wants us to rule his creation. He gave us dominion over the earth. He wants us to rule. The only dominion he didn't give us is to rule over people. Uh -uh. We don't lord over people. We, don't, we rule the earth, but we don't rule the people. People are precious to God. Human beings are really precious to God. So it's important that you understand who you are in this dominion mandate. That you live here today with a consciousness of man, I am a king. Keep saying it to yourself. Listen, this is a talking kingdom. We talk, and many times we talk ourselves into where we are supposed to be. Sometimes some of the things you desire and where to be and want to be, they won't come until you speak yourself them. Speak yourself into them. When I was in Bible school, I used to say I would be flying around the world preaching the gospel. In Bible school, I was 23. How old? 23 years old. Look at today, every, you know how many passports I've used? One finished, this one finished, that one finished. They keep, I keep printing new passports because they are all full from flying around. Church, anything is possible in your life. Please, I never want you to look at yourself and say, I'm nothing. Oh, uh, these people are the great ones. The, can I be honest with you? There is no difference between me and you at all. At all. Forget that pastors, we pastors, sometimes we come out and make you feel like we are too much. It's a lie. The same Holy Ghost I have, you have. Okay, you didn't hear me. The same blood of Jesus that cleansed me, cleansed you. There is no special thing that is, it's just my assignment. And your assignment is also special. It's also special. You can do this thing and you'll be flourishing. You'll be flourishing. No matter how small you are. You're selling peanuts. You can export peanuts to America. Uh -uh, you didn't hear me, church. Listen, I walked into a shop, African shop in Atlanta, Georgia. It has so many products from Nigeria. People are making those things in Nigeria, but they're selling them in stores. You know how many African stores are in Houston? Houston has close to 300 or 500 African stores. More, all their products are from Nigeria. Who told you you cannot? Please don't limit yourself. All I'm saying is, I, me, I don't want to be a local champion. God sent me to pastor kings. Uh -uh. You didn't, I don't think you heard me. I am not pastoring normal people. I am pastoring kings. I said I am pastoring kings. Did you hear what I said? I am pastoring what? Kings. You are a king where you are. Oh, Apostle, I just work for Spa. In that place, have a kingship mentality. It's not going to be long. Spa will be too small for you. That's if you don't even own the spa. Because the moment you start thinking in that dimension, you look at a bank. I work for this bank, but I can be a CEO here. Once you have that, your whole perception changes. I don't see myself as normal. No. I can't walk in anywhere now and you say, who are you? Uh-uh. You can't. When 
you look at me, you will know that this man, there is something about him. It has nothing to do with, uh, you know, I'm, no, you are a king. Just have the mentality. There is a mentality that you can have that places everything under your feet. Everything. You don't look at yourself like a peasant. You don't look at yourself like a beggar. You don't even look at yourself as a black man or a black woman. Is there anything that white people can do I can't do? No, I don't see that. When God spoke about the human race, he didn't say white humans or black humans. All of us are what? You're not hearing me. All of us are what? Humans. It's no different. So when you say somebody can do this, somebody stole this, somebody took land, somebody took house, nobody can take anything. God will give you money. You can buy out white. Every, see, this land was owned by a white person. Nestor was owned by a white person. The one we are buying now is owned by a white person. My friend, you'll be buying them up. Oh. Are you ready to buy up? Look at your neighbor. Say, I received the buying up anointing. Oh, yeah. You'll be buying. Oh, yeah. Let, listen. Dominion does not check color. When you are in dominion, any color will give you anything. I wish you got that. It went over your head. When you are in dominion, any color will give you anything. Anything. People invite you. Know how many white people come to me in the office for business deals? To give me business deals. They want me to be involved. To be involved. Are we together? For two years, I had a company. It's, 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 you know, they just called me and said, listen, we just want you to be part of the director. You don't do anything. We just love the anointing on your life. They paid me 70000 every month for two years. Are you here? Uh -uh, you didn't hear me. How much? Now they have stood on their feet. They say, okay, Apostle Sharp. Why? I'm in my purpose. Just imagine a company calling, honestly speaking, before the God I serve. I don't know where that company is physically. Where their office is. I don't know. I just have the address. But, so, when you are in your element, things work to you. You didn't hear what I said. Things do what? Work to you. These things come to meet me in the office. I don't go anywhere. My life is a house to... They, when when they, they sent some, some, I don't know if it's intelligence or scorpion or whatever, when I was under investigation, they were following me. They followed me for seven days. When they came into my office, the first thing they said, we knew you are not a drug dealer. I said, why? He said, we followed you. we've been following you for the past seven days. You just leave house, church, church, house, house, church. Because the normal thinking is any Nigerian man that is living like this, should be what? Come on, talk to me. Don't be ashamed. I won't, I won't, I won't curse you. Don't worry. I, I, I know what you think of us, you know. I know. Don't think we don't know. But not every Nigerian is like that. What will I be doing with drugs? For what? I don't, if you give me drugs and baby powder, I don't know the difference. I will rub two of them on my face. Are we together? But you see, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh what? Rich and adds no sorrow. I don't know who I came to speak to today, but please, let today be the last you think small of yourself. I'm telling you, stop thinking less of yourself. You are the real deal. You are a king where you are. Peter says you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood a holy nation, a peculiar person, you are called to show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Can't look down on yourself. So from today, when you live here, walk with your shoulders high. Square up your shoulders. I'm a daughter of the king. I'm a child. When one riffraff come and say, hey, uh, hello, Sisi, Unjani, come here. You've got nice body. Can I have you as a bush meat? 
looked at him and said, you, you fool. You know who you are talking to? You see, let me tell you, women, you will present yourself to what a man can pay for you. If you present yourself cheap, only cheap boys will be looking for you. That's why I talk to you ladies, when you dress anyhow, you wear, you wear clothes, the skirt is here, it tore up to here. What kind of demonic skirt is that? The other part is long, every, then all your tie is showing. That's, that's cheap. You become a cheap skate. People, see, parents, dress your children well. You think I'm expecting one idiot to marry Hannah? Oh, wait. Hannah's wedding, you will see. The kind of man that will be coming for her is not anyhow. Okay, how do you come anyhow? When you meet her, I mean, church, look, all I'm saying is just don't bring down your value. You are valuable before God. Don't bring yourself down cheap. Some of you are crying after a man. You are living with a man for 10 years. He doesn't want to marry you. Leave that fool. You didn't hear me. Apostle, I am still checking whether she's my wife. 10 years. Even those that write matric is 6 years for matric. University is 3 years. That means you have studied, you are studying a woman, you get first degree in 3 years. Then you get honors, get master's degree, and get PhD. Still studying the woman you want to marry. Uh -uh. Something is wrong. If you are living with a woman in this church and you are not married to her, I've told you in this church we don't charge for wedding or marriage. I have wedded people here, only them and one man, one woman as witnesses. I don't need all that drama. That's how I married. I married with seven people in church. Because I didn't have the money. Do it right, church. Do it right. In this kingdom, we obey God. Because that's the only way we can keep our authority. I obey God. I can now say, okay, you know, my wife is in America. Oh, I have freedom. Then I start looking for ladies. No, that's not we, how we live in this kingdom. In the kingdom, I am married and I honor my marriage. I honor the covenant in my marriage. I value my wife. I will not allow any woman to defy my body. My body is too high and too valuable for me to allow another person that is outside of marriage covenant to touch it. Are you hearing me, church? That's how you should value your covenant with Christ. Value it. Don't just wake up and you throw yourself, throw your leg, throw your... You know, a man says, how are you? Your wig is already in Cape Town. Your eyelashes are in Florida. What is your problem? No, keep your dignity. Keep your dignity. What did I say? Keep your dignity. I'm too valuable for me to allow any nonsense girl to defy my body. No, my body belongs to one woman that me and her are one. You, okay, no amen. That's it. No other woman. Look at every brother around you. Say, no other woman. Yeah, no other woman. Stop looking for what will kill you. You are not hearing me, church. I say, what did I say? Brothers, stop looking for what will kill you. The reason you are stuck today as a brother is that woman you slept with years ago. Because you see, church, just as we are in covenant, the kingdom of darkness is in covenant. You slept with a woman who has gone to St. Gomas 25 times, taking spirits, taking curses, ancestral, all kinds. Now you sleep with this woman and you are stuck after 20 years. You think, ah, I'm now born again. Church, let me tell you, Satan does not let go. It's what I was telling one guy. He says, you know, I joined the occult and I've repented and now things are still not working after six years. I said, that's Satan for you. That's why we say, don't go there. Don't sleep. Don't, eh, eh. Because Satan does not let go. Listen, when Moses died, the Bible says that Satan come, came to contend for the body of Moses. 
Hello, the, have you read that before? He came to contend for the most body of Moses and God had to send Michael and said, the Lord rebuke you. You remember that scripture? Please find it for us on the screen. Michael said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you, even the Lord of hosts. You know why Satan came to contend with Moses' body? Because when Moses was taken by Pharaoh's daughter, Moses got into a palace where there were idol worshippers. And Moses was dedicated to those altars. So Satan was still looking for him, even at death. So when you just sleep with a man that is cursed, that has gone to Sangomas, done Muti, and done all kinds of crazy things in Limpopo, and you now sleep with him, you inherit those things. And now you are fighting spirits, even five years after you are in a new marriage. And you're wondering what is going on here. Satan doesn't let go. Please, the best thing that you can do is obey God. I have peace. I have peace. You are a man today if your phone rings. Once your phone rings, you ah, you put it between your thigh. No. Your phone should, if you are in this church as a man, your wife should have your password. I, uh -uh. No men said amen, only women. Church, let's not be like that. Did you receive the word of God? Please. This is dominion message. I said, this is dominion message. You may not be shouting and jumping around, but this is true dominion. Some of us understand this thing. So we are in charge of Satan. Say, see, let me tell you, Satan knows I'm in charge of him. All demons in this nation knows I'm in charge of them. They all know. They know me. Go and ask them if you know them. They know me. They know me well. Well, well. 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 I've confronted many of them. Many. Many. When I see some demon-possessed people, they can't look at me in the eyes. They can't. They can't stare into my eyes. Never. The fire beaming out. You may not see it, but in the spirit, there is fire beaming out of my eyes. But you see, if you keep sleeping with all those nonsense people you are sleeping with, you can't have that level of fire. Uh -uh, no amen. All right. Every head bowed, all eyes closed, please. Every head bowed. Nobody looking around. I believe that Jesus is calling for someone today. You are here this morning and you are not born again. You have not made Jesus the Lord of your life. Listen. You cannot have dominion unless you are in Christ. Because Adam lost it to Satan. And many people in the world today are struggling with that because they don't have the dominion anymore. But it can be restored today because that's why Jesus came to die. And you say, Apostle, I am not born again. And I want to be restored back to this dominion mandate. This level of authority you are talking about, I want to be restored back. Into back to the dominion mandate where I am made in the image, the likeness of God and then having dominion on this earth. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to be born again. If you are the one I'm talking to, wherever you are, please raise your hand. I want to pray for you. Just where you are, raise up your hand. Raise it up. Thank you. Raise it up. Raise it up. Join these people. Don't be ashamed. Raise it up. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to be born again. I want this dominion mandate in my life. You are here. I want to pray for you specially. Keep your hands up if you raise this. Keep your hands up if you raise this. Come on. Come on. Somebody is still deciding. You don't have to decide. All of us, all, many of us here did all that one day. Someday, put your hands up. Quick. I want to pray for you. Keep your hands up. Somebody else says, Apostle, I once in my life gave my life to Christ, but somehow I've lost this relationship with Jesus. This dominion mandate, I've lost it because of my lifestyle. I don't have faith anymore. I'm just messing around, sleeping around, messing my life up because I don't have that control. 
and I would love to rededicate my life to Jesus. If that is you, join these people and raise your hand quickly. Join them. Don't be ashamed. Nobody is looking at you. If you raised your hand, all heads bowed. If you raised your hand, please stand up on your feet where you are. Stand up, please. So I pray for you. Stand up. You raised your hand. Stand up. Be bold. Shame the devil and let him know it is over between you and him today. Stand up where you are. Stand up. You raised your hand or you are still, your head is bowed but you want to raise your hand and Satan is telling you, don't do it, don't do it, don't try it. That is the voice of Satan. You know you need to give your life to Jesus. You can't make that decision after you are dead. And the moment you are dead without Jesus, you are going straight to hell. Unfortunately, I don't like to threaten people with hell, but it's true. And now you have the opportunity to stand up where you are and say, Jesus, I make a choice to follow you and leave Satan alone. You are the one I'm talking to. Stand up now. Be bold and join these people. All of you that are standing, I just need you to do me one more favor. Take your bag, your personal belongings, cell phone, and come here to the front. Come and meet me now. Come. 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 Church, can we celebrate them? Keep clapping. They are still coming. Keep clapping. Uh -uh, church, you are not rejoicing. Come on. One, two. Oh, okay. Oh, so you tripped it. God have mercy on you. All right, I'm joking. All right, congratulations in advance. This is the best decision. Listen, I made this decision when I was 22. And this is, I'm 53 now. So this is 32 years down the line or 31 years down the line. And God took my life. And today he's made something with it. That's the prayer I'm going to pray for you. I don't know why I shared this with you. But God is going to take your life and use it. Not just use it in South Africa, but in nations. Bow your heads and say these words from your heart. Repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus. Say it like you, are, you mean it. Say, Lord Jesus. I believe with all my heart that you are the Son of God. You died for me. And on the third day, you rose from the dead. I now receive you into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me all of my sins and my past. And I declare boldly that Jesus is the Lord of my life. Satan, I reject you, I denounce you, and I declare boldly that I will follow Jesus all the days of my life. Thank you, Father, for saving me in Jesus' name. Amen. That's it. Simple as that prayer is, spiritually, something has happened in your life. Just stretch your hands towards them. Let's pray for them. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this precious soul. Lord, the scripture says no man can do this except the Father.
draws him to Jesus. Father, we thank you for drawing these ones to yourself. And now, Lord, we present them before you upon their confession in our Lord Jesus Christ and in the resurrection. As a church, we declare their sins forgiven. Father, cancel their name from the book of death and write it in the book of life. We pray that the grace that brought them here will preserve them in the kingdom. Satan, I bind you from their lives. I break every curse of Satan, every curse of the law, every ancestral curse is broken off your life. And I speak the blessing of Abraham into your spirit, man. Father, thank you for saving them today. Lord, we hand these lives over to you. Father, do something with these lives. Do something global. The same way you've used my life, use their life globally in Jesus' name. And the church say, Amen. We want you to go with our sister right there. We want to take your name and your number so that we can be in touch with you. Now, this coming Saturday, I want to invite you especially at 10 a.m. We're going to be here. We want to sit with you on what we call our foundation class. So we're going to spend time together. You will totally enjoy it. I don't want to tell you what will happen, but you will be blessed. Just come here Saturday, 10 a.m. We're expecting you. The office will call you with the numbers that you are going to give us. So please just leave your number with them. May God bless you. May the Lord honor you. Please can you go with them quickly. Church, are we celebrating these people? Come on, come on, come on. Come on, let them celebrate them. Come on. Let them know they made the right decision today. Come on. Amen. All right. Do you have your tithes and your offerings? Does anybody want to bless Jesus this morning? Did you really receive the word I preached this morning? You sure? That's the word from God to you. God is saying, listen, my son, my daughter, you are a king. Don't think less of yourself anymore. You are not cheap. Don't sell yourself short. Don't sell yourself to the devil. The same way Adam and Eve sold them, him and his wife sold themselves because of a simple fruit that God told them not to eat. Don't sell yourself. Don't sell yourself for sex. Don't sell yourself for money. Don't sell yourself for rent. Don't sell yourself for a man or a woman. Don't sell yourself. You are worth more than that. Say amen, somebody. Let's lift up our tithes and our offering. Father, we are grateful today. Thank you, Father, for the word you've taught us this morning. Father, we come before you knowing that, Father, you have called us and given us a mandate like the way they give government officials mandate. For we are the governmental church. And Lord, we therefore give to advance the government of God. To advance your purpose on the earth. We sow our seed, knowing fully well. The Bible says that he that soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly. And anyone that sows bountifully shall reap bountifully. He said, let every man give according to as he has purpose in his heart. Not of necessity, for God or compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And Father, you said you will make all grace abound towards us, that we all, having all sufficiency in all things, shall abound to every good work. Lord, I thank you for multiplying the seed in our hands and giving us according to your word a hundredfold, even to the degree of a thousandfold harvest. We receive it with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, choir, give us a song. And we will never settle for less. That's the right song. We know there's more that's found in you. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. Yes.
will never settle for less. Somebody shout it, I will never settle for less. Say it like you are serious. I will never settle for less. I am a king. Do you believe it? Put your hands together for the Lord. I'm a king. I'm royalty. When you step out from here, behave like royalty. Stop using swear words. Royalty don't swear. Royalty dresses well. Royalty is dignified. Carry yourself well. Carry yourself well. I have to paint the picture of a king for you. Carry yourself well. Royalty will not wear mini skirt. Royalty will not leave stomach open. Royalty will not leave cleavage open. Uh -uh, you are not hearing me. Royalty don't post their naked. How many of you have seen Ramaphosa's naked body on social media? No. Royalty don't post their naked self on social media. Those who wear underwear running around the beach. No, that's not royalty. That's a tout. Hello. Somebody shout royalty. Carry yourself well. Carry yourself with dignity. You must see me when I arrive at the airport, son. I'm not lying. Immigration officers, custom officers, pastor, pastor, pastor. Everybody knows I'm a man of God. And listen, I don't travel with suit. I wear t-shirt. But when I arrive, pastor, pastor, pastor. I arrived the last time I when I came back now from Dubai. Uh, one custom officer said to me, uh, uh, custom officer, so I'm coming. He says, hey, my name's sake, Felix. I'm like, how did you know who I am? I say, we all know you. I say, really? That's how you are. Everybody knows you. That's royalty. That's royalty. Everywhere. Everywhere. Church, let's carry ourselves well. You and I have been made kings and priests unto our God. Now I bless you with the blessing of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, I declare from today, your level changes to your royal status. Father, everything that has buried your people's royal destiny, I bury them today in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever limitation has been placed before you that has hindered your royalty, today I place them under a curse in the name of Jesus. And today, by the grace of God, I elevate you to your royal status. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord give you peace. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And the Lord be gracious unto you. May the Lord prosper the work of your hands. As you go out today, after this dominion mandate, you are coming out with testimonies. You are coming out with takeover testimonies. You are coming out with takeover testimonies. People will bring you things you didn't demand for. In the name of Jesus, you will receive houses you did not build. You will receive lands you did not pay for. You will receive cars you did not buy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout, I am royalty. I am a king. God bless you. I love you all. Have a blessed Sunday. If today...